Welcome to this unique episode of Daring Abroad African Edition. Now, South Africa can be regarded as a melting pot of the African continent. This is due to the different nationalities one would find while in the country. With an immigrant population of over 2 million, South Africa is indeed a top destination for tourism as well as business. With such a high concentration of diverse cultures, it is vital that the Kenyan community in South Africa network as well as assist one another. This episode was produced by my colleague Eliza Mwangi with cameraman Edison Mutumba who were in South Africa. Being a Kenyan here, you, we, we are all Kenyans. We, we share a, a culture together and with that we need uh, to, to have a common vision of, of growing together, being united to do great things. Every Kenyan doing something progressive and something positive that puts our flag out there and sends a strong message about our nation and who we are as a people definitely gets the title for being Mashuja. The number of Kenyans relocating to South Africa is on the rise. Currently, there are about 40,000 Kenyans living in the country. This is according to the Kenyan Embassy in Pretoria, which begs the question, why are so many Kenyans moving here? There are many business opportunities that flourish between our two countries. South Africa is a much larger economy um, in terms of size and opportunity. I mean, they're you know, way ahead in terms of their manufacturing potential, for example. Um, so there's a lot to learn. With the numerous opportunities attracting a huge Kenyan population, it is no surprise that organizations like the Kenya Diaspora in South Africa, popularly referred to as Kedasa, have been formed. Kedasa's main objective is to promote the collective interest of Kenyans living in the country. Kedasa was formed in 2011 and, uh, uh, as, as an initiative of Ambassador Tom Amolo, uh, who saw the need to bring the Kenyans together, unify them and sort of streamline the channels of communication. And, yes, and in 2018, this need for cooperation and unification so Kedasa introduced events like the Kenyan Market Day, which was held in Santon during Mashuja Day. Kenyans are not united. The Kenyan community is very fragmented. People stay with each where they, where they are uh, and connect with the people who they are with or where they work with or the, uh, where the uh, economic background basically. So we wanted to change that. The background now is learning and hearing about what the Jewish do. Jewish actually over many years have been migrants. They only in the last uh, maybe 60 years have they had their own country. They've been migrants all over the world, including here in Johannesburg. But what we've noticed with the Jews is that they're the most successful migrants here in Johannesburg. And the principle they apply simply is they trade with each other, they work with each other, they buy from each other. Uh, what they say is one, once uh, a rand goes into a Jewish hand, it does not come out again unless, I mean, they have no one else to provide that service. So I'm trying to imply that our, uh, us as migrants here in South Africa, we should emulate and follow the same principles that they do to build each other to be stronger. The event was very much welcomed by the Kenyan community in South Africa, who felt it was about time that such an event was initiated. One such person is Ndonye Kyoko, a graphic designer who has lived in the country since 1996. According to him, it is quite difficult to start life here without having any networks. I came here to just look for a better life. Then after that, I started, it was, because there was nothing else I could do, I, I started selling uh, there were some cutleries that we were asked to sell in different parts of the country. So I did that for about a, a year and a half because it's not easy uh, to make it in South Africa. They, they could, you could be having issues of papers, not having the right papers, not getting work permits easily. The same is echoed by Carlos Ferrigi, who goes by the name Carlos Comfort. Carlos is a DJ and artist. <laughs> He has lived in South Africa for over 14 years. DJ DJ in Lianzia, Florida, Florida 2000. Yeah, nakina the late party ranks. Nakina nani uyu saya mekwa DJ alikwa MC Chris Darling. Yeah, so Lianzia Gauko. That was 2000. 2000, yeah. Hey, maisha ilikuwa ngumu bana we. Hey, maisha ilikuwa hard. Ah, nikona hapa start oboa. Yeah, ndio sasa ani akili kakuja tu kasema like let me go to South Africa. Mimi nilifika huku nilikuwa na lala nje. Hii Johannesburg. Naona for like 3 maybe 3 months. 
DJ South Africa iko na pesa. Unaona? So unapata hapa the biggest DJ ule ule wa hapa hivi. Uh, like maybe for an hour or two hours anapata let me say a million Kenyan shillings. Yes, to book that guy. Nani Kenya anapewa hiyo do? Eh? Carlos adds that even after making it into the entertainment industry, it was still difficult for him to penetrate the market. I promote like Kenyan music and like East African music, like Kenya, yeah, Kenyan music. Because babu like here in South Africa, uh, South Africa on a jipenda. These people they listen to their own things. They promote their own music and culture. No, no. So you and your kids see to miss. Carlos and Kyoko's experience highlights the importance of networking with fellow Kenyans when in foreign lands, a fact that Godfrey Kamato insists is the goal of the Kenyan Market Day event. We understand that uh, when uh, people are united, they are stronger. But again, as migrant workers, when you to unite people who are here to make a living is so difficult. So we thought, why don't we create a networking opportunity for Kenyans to come and network with each other, trade with each other, know each other, uh, socialize. And so such an event is sort of a stepping stone to achieving that kind of economic uh, prosperity that we all came to search for. Everyone who is here did not just come uh, to South Africa. They all, uh, for, for, for any other reason, apart from trying to improve their lives and make a better living for themselves. <laughs> This year's event saw about 100 Kenyan businessmen and women converge at the Fundown High School to showcase their innovative and entrepreneurial spirit. From transport to hospitality, food to insurance, beauty to technology, almost all industries were well represented. For us it meant a big deal that Kenyans come together and just showcase what they're about, how they're doing in South Africa, how successful their businesses are. The market stalls that we've seen here today um, tell us two things. They tell us, number one, that Kenyans are enterprising. Um, they're here in South Africa involved in business um, and economic activity. So they're productive. And that for us means they are mashuja. They are making us proud as Kenya that um, they're carrying our flag high here in terms of even the kind of business they're doing. It fits within the economic setup of this country where they are, they've chosen to live. So the, you can see they're involved in investments, they're involved in beauty, they're involved in um, import and export of commodities, in technology. Um, and these are important areas of industry. So they're making us really proud. Um, and also encourage you again to continue doing your good business. And these contributions by the Kenyan entrepreneurs are not only economical, but also humanitarian. Sally Kim is an educationist and the director of Smart Kids Club, an organization that develops educational apps for kids. Okay, one of the fundamental core values we have as a company is to ensure the child in the village is able to benefit just like the children from parents who are in the city who can easily be able to purchase this. And that's why we try to partner with governments and big businesses, corporates and blue chip companies that are able to take it to the child in the village. So one of the things we've done is um, people like Safaricom, Econet, Snaplify, we identify partners looking at the population of Africa and the countries. This hardworking nature of Kenyans in the South African diaspora has not gone unnoticed. Businesses like Mukuru, a money transfer company, have indeed taken notice and are tapping into the innovative and resilient character of these entrepreneurs. In Kenya, we've partnered up with all the banks via CBA, and then also through that relationship, that business relationship that we have, we are able to actually tap into M-Pesa also. So now somebody can be able to send money into an M-Pesa wallet in Kenya, and they can pick, uh, the recipient can pick up from any agent there. And Kenyan companies are not left behind either. We normally visit to where Kenyans are. Our biggest market is uh, the diaspora, the Kenyans in uh, diaspora. And uh, we wanted to emphasize on uh, the Kenyans to invest back at home. And not just to invest, but to use uh, a credible and a sound investment vehicle. This year's event was not only about networking. 
It also provided opportunity for Kenyans to access various government services. We are providing a service. For example, we were we are here replacing IDs, ID cards, um, helping them um, apply for passports. So we work side by side with them in their activities by being present and supporting them. It is evident that this year's Kenyan Market Day was a success, and it is the hope of the organizers that the event is the first of many and would result in the growth of Kenyan businesses. We are planning to have excellence awards that uh, come also uh, that will be organized every year and in different cities. So we'll plan an event in Bloemfontein, in Cape Town, in Durban uh, over the years and circulate it. That way we'll be able to make sure that Kenyans as they work with each other, they give each other excellent service and that I'm sure will enhance unity and build us as a Kenyan community and make us stronger. This hope is also shared by Ambassador Jean Kamau. In future, you know, we would like to see these kind of activities become um, regular um, and that they're sustainable based on their own contribution to the activity. So you'll notice that it's sponsored by the businesses. So the businesses themselves have come together, paid something so that they can get this magnificent facility, have some decent tents and have a, a fun day for their children. And this is the advice the ambassador has to all Kenyans on our diaspora bite. I think peace is so important in our country um, and that as long as we are peaceful and we maintain um, you know, that level of, of harmony and that we, we are united, we're going to go great places as a nation. Community and cooperation. This is the foundation that Kenyans living in South Africa want to build their businesses on. A foundation that should be emulated by every Kenyan. For it is only through cooperation that we can indeed grow as a country. Until next time, I'm Michael Zimanti.